The speaker of this session is a Victor uh, Nectarin of uh, uh, University of Dresden and tech, the Technical University of Dresden. And his, the title of his talk is 3D Concrete Printing by Layered Extrusion, Requirements for Fresh Concrete and Testing. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hi everybody, and welcome to this presentation. I'm Victor Mischerin from TU Dresden in Germany, and I'm going to share with you some thoughts on requirements for fresh concrete and testing uh, in the context of the 3D concrete printing by layered extrusion. While individual approaches within this uh, group uh, can differ considerably with respect to their material concepts and equipment, all of them rely on sound interaction between materials and machine along the processing chain. Here, yeah, generally speaking, the major processing steps are similar in all extrusion based manufacturing approaches. Uh, they all include transportation of built materials to the printhead, the printhead process, it means extrusion, then the deposition of built material accompanied by its deformation, and deposition of further layers accompanied by loading of each deposited layer of early deposited layers by the self-weight and process-induced forces, as well as related deformation of built material. The special features of these steps depend on the chosen manufacturing concept, and uh, we have here three major categories. So the first one is the extrusion of stiff material, similar to the conventional extrusion. The ideal case is here the so-called infinite brick extrusion regime, where the filament and the nozzle cross-sections are equal. So then the second category is extrusion of flowable material, usually with addition of an admixture or admixtures in the printhead uh, to speed up the build-up process after deposition. Uh, in this case, the material flows freely until the stress induced by the gravity equals the yield stress of the print material. These uh, two categories actually represent the asymptotic cases, which can be mathematically modeled quite accurately. Most extrusion flows are, however, located somewhere in between these two cases, which makes the description more complex, and we will show some numerical simulation on this later on. Well, uh, this is an example of this uh, common case where we have not very well-defined uh, flow conditions. And finally, the third uh, pretty rarely applied category is extrusion of material using additional energy input, uh, for example, vibration, as you can see here on the uh, some fluctuation of the material. Uh, this uh, energy input facilitates the delivery and deposition of stiff mixtures. Okay, if we put this all in one table, uh, we can see here different manufacturing approaches and uh, four processing steps, as mentioned at the beginning. So to master all these process steps, we need to understand the related physical processes, and they are all listed here in the table. So it's quite a lot of information. So I refer here to the CCR paper for details. Today, I will address briefly just a screw extrusion, then gravitational flow, and also deformation due to the self-weight, uh, trying to link these physical processes with the required rheological properties of fresh concrete. So I will not address pumping. Sorry, Peter, so the speaker of the previous session, the last one. Um, but I appreciate uh, you referring to our work uh, in this and, uh, well, surely um, it's worth presenting, but I will not manage uh, to do it today. So before starting uh, going uh, into particular processes, let me emphasize another important parameter or feature, which is the nozzle geometry. On one hand, it affects massively the material flow and accordingly the requirements for the rheological properties. And on the other hand, larger nozzles enable to use mixtures with coarser aggregates, which not only yield different rheological behavior, but also need different equipment for testing in comparison to fine mortars. Okay, uh, so first, uh, the extrusion as such. 
here we have a process where material is forced through a nozzle reduction. The discharge of the fresh concrete through the nozzle opening must occur exactly at the specified rate, means volume per time unit, and possibly with low energy consumption. In the case, if the extruded flow rate is not accurately synchronized with the velocity of the printhead, the printed structure will be not continuous or coherent. You see here uh, two uh, negative examples of that. Besides synchronization, the rheological process of printed concrete play a key role in extrudibility, leading to tearing or cracking of the filament if not optimized. And the scale of a printed element, even minor extrusion errors may pile up to a considerable damage, as you see here in this figure. Well, screw extrusion is the most common extrusion technique. Here, fresh concrete or mortar is subject to very complex flow field with different shear histories and pressures. Unfortunately, as yet, we do not have formulas for estimating the force flow rate relationships based on rheological properties of fresh concrete. Indeed, even estimating the flow rate is challenging for such complex fluids as fresh concrete. So this, is, uh, this works best for progressive cavity pumps, which have been used uh, in the context of the concrete 3D printing in order to stabilize extrusion flow. You see here uh, some corresponding formulas, which I will not be further comment. Uh, to take the next step, to, it means to predict the forces needed to convey fresh concrete in such extruder and hopefully towards deriving adequate analytical formulas, we will need numerical analysis, I believe. Uh, this is a uh, work in progress on this issue where we use a distinct element method for the simulation of concrete flow. Uh, the obvious benefit of numerical simulation is that we can easily analyze the flow in complex geometries and identify the local problems so that we can then also optimize uh, print heads and also the material we, we want to print. As yet, we succeeded to simulate various scenarios uh, of uh, both deficient and good synchronization of the material delivery and uh, print head velocity, as you see here again in this little simulation. As for material testing, at this stage, I recommend to rely on inline approach with measurement of extrudate flow rate and energy per unit volume as key characteristics. Uh, but we should continue to work towards the use of other equipment, uh, such as uh, re-emitters or RAM extruders. So to estimate the extrudibility of the material with various screw extruders with uh, minimum, uh, let us say, um, effort. Okay, now to gravity. Gravity plays an important role in various process steps. Here we first look at the situation during the material deposition. Indeed, uh, it's kind of a competition between the force of gravity and the material strength. In rheological terms, it's uh, yield stress. The flow occurs when the product of the material density, acceleration of gravity, and height of the deposited layer is higher than the yield stress. The flow leads to a decrease in the layer's height until the equilibrium is reached, and then the flow stops. So the exact geometry of the deposited layer cross-section is of major interest from various perspectives. To predict it, we use uh, used particle finite element method. In this work published as a preprint, um, we can see here that um, after validating the model by comparing predictions with experimental results, um, or which works quite nicely, we went to the uh, parameter studies. And um, here, first, we can see that even a relatively small change in the height position of the nozzle uh, noticeably affects the shape of the filament cross-section. 
So second, uh, if we keep all other parameters constant, but increase the material supply to the nozzle, the layer becomes wider. The opposite effect is observed for increasing speed of uh, the printhead movement if any other parameters are frozen. In the reality, we adjust the material flow, of course, to the uh, printhead velocity. So the last diagram shows that if it is done properly, the effect of the print velocity on the shape of the filament is neglectable. So, well, uh, this all was for just one layer. The gravitational force increases, of course, with the deposition of every further layer. This eventually leads to material failure by plastic yielding or stability failure due to buckling. And um, when we consider the material failure, uh, we must be in mind that the static yield stress increases in time due to the structure built up in resting concrete. The two most popular models used for describing the development of the ill stress are linear model by Nicolas Roussel and exponential model by uh, Perrault. The time interval between layers have to be adjusted to the structure built up rate uh, or vice versa to avoid the failure. The experimental determination of the static ill stress requires specific testing procedures different from the usual rotation rheometry. So we suggest to use so-called constant shear rate test as proposed by Nirel and all, and uh, later improved by Irina Ivanova. So she used uh, two different uh, rotation rheometers to show that the methodology works uh, nicely for different uh, 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 equipment. By comparing single batch and multi batch approaches, it was established that the single batch on site friendly approach can ensure non destructive testing when a breaking criteria in, is implemented. Each individual uh, static ill stress measurement can be terminated at the moment when the effective uh, shear rate becomes equal to the applied shear rate, as you see here in both diagrams. This uh, breaking criteria was proven to be applicable independent on the material stiffness or resistance time, so that structural built-up rate can be obtained by performing subsequent measurements on a single specimen. Uh, moreover, uh, an easy, straightforward method for data evolution was proposed, including determination of the proportionality limit using the maximum apparent viscosity, as uh, shown here. This is a very relevant parameter. The loss of stability or buckling can be initiated by the excess of elastic deformation already, as was shown by uh, Nicolas Roussel for a free wall using this uh, simple equation. Well, uh, rheological measurements uh, have, however, uh, their limits as uh, it becomes, uh, uh, if, if it comes to stiff concrete composition, and uh, they are, of course, not very feasible for the use in the practice of construction, as Peter also said in his talk. Thus, alternatively, um, unexual compression tests on fresh concrete or penetration tests can be performed. Uh, however, the only way to validate the prediction is uh, a real buildability test, as you saw here on the right side. Well, to uh, summarize, um, uh, fortunately, we indeed have uh, um, good understanding of underlying physics, uh, physics uh, nowadays, uh, so that uh, we can, based on this understanding, go forward to development of uh, printable materials and um, also optimizing the different uh, processes and uh, different um, uh, well, control regimes of, of printing. However, for sure, we need further research to make these tools more reliable and uh, um, we should develop further analytical formulas, but um, I believe that numerical tools indeed have a great potential to uh, support the process. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, the support by the German Research Foundation. 
uh, who also funded the priority program Opus Fluidum Futurum. So a part of this work was done within this program, which is uh, coordinated research uh, of uh, 15 universities in Germany. And uh, by the way, we are now looking for a postdoc uh, uh, who would strengthen here the team and uh, coordinate this effort. So it's really very nice position. So uh, uh, if you have interest and feel qualified, so please contact me. So finally, I also want to uh, have a little announcement here of uh, the two new RILIM uh, technical committees on 3D concrete printing. One focusing on uh, the fresh concrete and another on hardened uh, uh, concrete, so properties of hardened concrete uh, after printing. Uh, the first meeting or kickoff meeting is on the April 9th. You see here the time, so you are uh, welcome to join. If you are, have interest, please address uh, Nicola Russell, Dirk Lopke, myself, or Frank Boss. So, and uh, this is all. You see here also my contact details again, and uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions. Okay, thank, thank you, Victor. Very nice talk. We have about... Uh, uh, four or five minutes for questions. How do you deal with the cold joints in case of printing stiff materials? Uh, uh, good question indeed. Well, um, it's not, not uh, that bad it disappears on the first glance. Uh, we still have, uh, well, usually a pretty good bond. Well, uh, of course, depending on the stiffness of the material. Um, but still it's fresh and fresh printing. However, if you feel that you need to improve bond, of course, you can also add some primer. So before uh, yeah, printing the next layer upon the first one. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, it should be, of course, tested um, uh, and it's for sure an issue. Okay, the, uh, uh, we have a second question. How do you calibrate the EDM uh, model parameters and what experiments you need for the calibration? Uh, <laughs> again, a very good question. Um, so uh, uh, you mean DM parameter or which one? He wrote down EDEM. Okay, okay. Uh, probably it's uh, a distinct element method. Well, yes. indeed, uh, this this parameters and uh, 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 Dr. Matis uh, actually um, presented it nicely in his talk. Uh, these parameters are not directly related uh, to the rheological uh, properties as we can measure in re-emitter. So we need kind of a calibration of the model, which works nicely. So we use uh, relatively sh simple shear tests, uh, yeah. similar to what we use in, in solid mechanics. Of course, um, there are more let us say, complex uh, 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 cases we can analyze, uh, again, as a, as a starting point, like even uh, analyze what happens in the, in the re-emitter. Um, so, but anyway, we need uh, some experimental benchmark uh, uh, at which we can calibrate the model. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, uh, thanks. Then I have another question. Can you comment on the role of the lubrication layer from extrusion process and the relevant weak interfacial characteristics? Oh yeah, what we see is a very, very pronounced effect uh, during pumping, So, but <laughs> I haven't presented this topic. Uh, for uh, a RAM extrusion, we can also, uh, well, uh, monitor this quite nicely and it's quite easily to describe, so the effect of the lubrication layer. Uh, however, in uh, screw extrusion, it becomes a little bit more fuzzy. So in this case, we don't have uh, now a kind of a good approach to quantify the effect of lubrication layer. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are working on this. So we trust that numeric analysis will help again here also to, to have some deeper insight into the uh, subject. Okay. Uh, we have an, another question. Uh, did you use reinforcement in, the, in any 3D printed specimens? Uh, if you did, oh. how? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Indeed, a very nice question. <clears throat> so I, I recommend everybody who is interested in reinforcement to join sessions on uh, Wednesday and Thursday uh, coming week. So it will be again in ICI, uh, ICI uh, uh, Spring Convention. Um, it, uh, it's it's two special sessions on that. And I also will present our work on uh, introducing 
uh, carbon um, uh, reinforcement uh, during the printing process, so actually uh, yeah, uh, deposition of uh, reinforcement and concrete at the same time. And on the other hand, I really want to recommend you to uh, read the paper which was published just a few few days ago in Cement and Concrete Composites, uh, where um, a group of international experts, uh, including myself, we tried to give a, 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 a comprehensive overview of different approaches and also suggested a classification for introducing reinforcement and 3D printing. So it's uh, cement and concrete composites, uh, and it's it's just just uh, appeared. So you can find it on the in the internet. Okay, one last question, then we have to move on. Uh, what are the effects of aging hydration during the open time? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I believe, no, no, I mean, it's, it's a good question, but uh, yeah, what, what should I say? I mean, uh, if hydration, yeah, uh, is affecting, of course, structure built up uh, for sure, uh, in addition to, to fluctuation, uh, fluctuation, sorry. Um, and, and it should be considered uh, uh, when we optimize the printing regime. So, I mean, I can talk about this uh, surely for a longer time, but I believe uh, the time is <laughs> over now. So maybe we can continue after all presentations are done, as I understand that we will have half an hour for general discussion. So I will be happy to, to uh, come back to that. Yes, okay, thank you. Yeah, Victor, very nice yeah, talk. Welcome.